Well, good afternoon and welcome. The uh, conditions are perfect for another top-class day of angling. We had the individual event yesterday with Fisher Mania, won by Jamie Hughes, but today it's the turn of the internationals, and we have, uh, well, a man who knows about international fishing. We will give his credentials in a minute, Tommy Pickering and Keith Arthur again. Give us the difference to yesterday. The main difference is no legend. Yesterday we saw most of the fish, the biggest weights, were all caught swim feeder fishing, but we just spoke to a bit of an expert, and, and we've seen him do it here. And that really surprised me, because I thought it was going to be a pole match. The pole was dreadful. We didn't see, a, didn't see anyone's float go under for half an hour. Today they can't ledger. They'll be on the pole. It's going to be a very, very different match. I think we'll see a lot of fish caught today, more than yesterday, but I could be wrong. Tommy, former world champion. I think come on, you can show us what you've got alongside, you know. You, some of us bring a teacup alongside. <laughs> just, a little, little, just a little trophy. It's the, just uh, a little trophy. It's the, uh, other like the trophies abroad, the really little. <laughs> that's the feeder world championships last week, which the lads won. And uh, you get a, a little trophy like that. And, uh, the lads when you're the manager, of yeah, course. Yeah, it's a team. And they, they need managing. managing. And they do need managing, trust me. <laughs> they really do. But no, they, they won it in spectacular style and um, we've retained this title. And hopefully we can uh, put a lot of work in the next 12 months and find us something that nobody's ever done before. Win, win a world champs three years on trot. Apart from Alan, in, individual, but mm. nobody's ever done it. So unbelievable, unbelievable it was last week. It's quite unique and probably one of the most exciting things that's ever happened to me in, in, in fishing. It was incredible, incredible. Well so, done, Tommy. Congratulations. Yeah. Don't let that trophy go far from your no, side. Don't worry. Let's have a look at what we've got going ahead today at the Arena Lake. This is how it's going to pan out. All, all of the pegs are covered. We have the juniors covering six of the pegs. They've just started. They will have the hourly weigh-in. And at four o'clock, we'll find out who the junior champion is, the star of tomorrow. In a few moments' time, the international match will commence. And like yesterday, it's the cumulative total of what the anglers catch during the day. Of course, today there's a pairs event, and we weigh in every half an hour. The uh, presentation comes at around 20 past five this afternoon. Well, it's not just pride that's at stake, there's also money, which goes normally into the International Federation. It's not cheap to angle, and the international champions will take home £10,000. The junior champion gets £1,000 pocket money. And the biggest fish, this could be between the top-class internationals or the, uh, the stars of tomorrow, the six juniors, the biggest fish caught today will take home £1,000. Right, let's go to our master of ceremonies. It's Phil Seymour. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to Cudmore Fisheries at Barry Hearns. Matchroom Sports proudly presents Coral Fisher Mania International. The anglers are in position. It's time to get the action underway. It's the all-in. <laughs> well, it's a little serene now. And again, the crowds have gathered here today. To give an indication of what happens, we have two anglers from each country. Wales on one and nine. We have the two Frenchmen, the two Irish, the two Italians, two from Holland, two from Scotland, England, much fancied, the two Belgians, and they are spread across the lake. They're basically looking at each other across the lake today, aren't they, Keith? They are. And, and what we've got to explain first of all is there's been a 10-minute pre-baiting period. At 5 to 12, there was another klaxon, and the internationals, not the juniors, could use that 10 minutes to put any feed they wanted to put in to prepare their peg for the match ahead. Give, we see the names there, if you're an angler, you, they're instantly recognisable. We have some world-class talent here, Absolutely. some legends of your sport. Uh, Milo Colombo on peg 12, <laughs> I mean, we know about the English, says Milo, he's a, a genuine legend. He's got a tackle company, an eponymous tackle company, that's been going for many years, massive. He's massive. brought in lots of unique tackle to England that's now been copied and emulated and, 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 and messed about with, but, but Milo made so much stuff that was so unique to pole fishing, and that helped our pole anglers. Well, Keith, when it comes to a Saturday in the individual event, the peg draw is so instrumental, and there was a peg draw yesterday. And what, Explain how this works out with the pegs. Well, what we've got, 16 pegs around here. These are the main match. This is where the Fishermania International is. And each team has drawn two pegs, eight pegs apart. So we've got one and nine as a pair, two and ten, etc. Now, that's how that works, and then the juniors in the lower part of the match here, just where the ladies were yesterday, and in the middle of all those we've got Andy May, who's our expert, who will be working out what's going on on the lake during the day, but that's where the six, uh, the six junior, the junior right, that's, are. That's the view from above, Keith, that we can see. Now let's get down and get a little bit closer amongst the reeds and we can talk to our reporters doing telly in a welly is Rachel Brooks. Just changed out of the wellies, Rob, as the weather changed, I'm afraid, but 
You may be looking down on me from up there, but these are the anglers whole nations look up to. On peg number one, we've got Lee Edwards from Wales. Now, he wasn't sure what to expect today. He thinks he's going to be up against it, but he says his teammates on peg nine are in a really good position. He's hoping that their cumulative scores will mean that that keeps them in the running. Now, on peg number two is Gilles Codin. Gilles from France. He's got 45 years fishing experience. He said to me the plan is to fish on the pole for the first hour, about six metres, see how he gets on, and then change from there if he needs to. His favourite angler, by the way, is Will Raisin, and we'll see him in a moment. Now, on peg number three is the best ginger hobbit angler in the world, otherwise known as Nick Howell. He says he's fishing for Middle Earth today, otherwise known as Ireland, and his plan is to fish on the pole excellently, he told me. We'll keep tabs on that. And then on peg number four, newcomers to the event, Italy, it's Claudio Guicciardi. Now, Claudio uh, is... is very, very keen, very happy, I should say, with his peg number four. He sat there yesterday and watched Jamie Hughes win Fishermania. So he's very pleased with his position. He says his favourite angler is his team manager. Wise man. Rob, over to you. Well, thank you, Rachel. Got some big hitters in this section. And we look to my left in peg five. That's Dieter Fredericks from Holland. He's fished for Holland in international events on 15 occasions. He's part of the international squad that won the World Championships last year. And, of course, he fished here last year and came second. So they want to avenge that and take it one step further this year. He's unflappable, that man. Absolutely unflappable. Peg six now. Just behind me here, Jamie Masson of Scotland. Now, Jamie has won the UK Angling Championships twice. He plies his trade in England. He's used to this sort of fishing. And interestingly, he's been talking to Jamie Hughes about tactics, not just yesterday, but in the run-up to it. And Jamie told him yesterday, forget absolutely everything I've told you so far. It's a very, very different match now. So, open to anything. It could happen over there. We come to a man now in peg seven that fishes under the St. George Cross. It is Will Raisin of England. He needs no introduction. Individual UK champion in the past. Individual European champion individual gold champion and he's won team gold for england on five different occasions strikes fear into everybody and now the last man in my section peg eight eric deventi from belgium he's been the belgian angler of the year four times two silver medals in the european championships individually two golds in the team event so a real field of class over here Bryn law can you match that not quite, no. Dale Krob, we have a Welshman on the next peg along. It's the man who was actually involved in the Fishermania event yesterday, John Harvey. There's already been a ripple of applause behind him because he's landed his first fish of the day. So he's picking up very much where he left off yesterday afternoon. He finished very strongly, finished 10th in the event when he fished it yesterday and had a very good last half hour. And he's on a much more favourable peg, it would appear today, with the breeze blowing in towards us on this section of the lake. Next then to John is a man who will need no introduction to many of those who follow the sport across Europe. It's the Frenchman Jean Desquet, very, very famous French angler, often known for an unconventional style that we may see through the course this afternoon. We certainly saw it in the event when he was involved last year. Let's take a walk a little further along the bank. Two of these pegs here, 10 that we've just been at and 11 that we're going to now, proved pretty useful pegs yesterday because the people on them finished in third and fourth positions respectively. So it's possible that we could see quite a bit of activity in this part of the lake. That's certainly been the case already for Vince Walsh of Ireland because he's already landed his first fish of the afternoon as well. He's from Donegal. It's a very different type of fishing for the Irish guys. Not used to this sort of thing at home. He says the water's usually a different colour when he fishes at home. And they've got a very busy couple of days ahead because they're straight off to Slovakia to compete in the World Championships tomorrow first thing. So Vince has already landed his first fish. On my final peg position, somebody who definitely is regarded as a legend by many of those who follow the sport of angling around the world. The man who did so much to introduce the pole into angling, Milo Colombo, the Italian. First time he's been involved in this, there'll be an awful lot of interest and attention in how he competes and how he gets on this afternoon. It'll be very, very interesting indeed to see how he copes with what Fishermania has to throw at him. So he's very much looking forward to the event. On to you, Andy. Thank you, Bryn. Um, this section yesterday was really tough. Um, in fact, peg 13, we've got Jürgen Sparings of Holland on peg 13 and on 14, Brian Clark. They're the two pegs that finished last in the match. Of course, a very different match yesterday. It'll be interesting to see how these guys, with their different techniques and different tactics, fare. Jürgen Spirings, 36 years old from Holland, was part of that Dutch team that won gold in Croatia um, last summer. Fantastic angler, came to match fishing very late in life, but I'll tell you what, he's gone through the Dutch fishing system very quickly indeed. 
he's on to pick 14 and Brian Clark. Brian's a 50-year-old plumber from Telford, but he's also a very highly respected, highly decorated um, angler for Scotland. He's fished in the pairs event here, Fishermania before, didn't fish the last couple of years, but when he did, he finished tw um, both times in his section, he finished second. Unfortunately for him, both times he was beaten by an angler from England. Now, we've got a rather long walk between Brian's peg and peg uh, number 15, which we're just making our way to. Interesting match yesterday, wasn't it? Because we had those two pegs where they really struggled, but for a long period, where we're walking to now, peg 15, was where Dale Shepherd was winning the match for the early part of the competition. Of course, he could fish the method feeder, and the guys aren't allowed to do that today. They're only allowed to float fish. Now, here we are on peg 15. Now, this man is the other angler in the England team. He's a bloke called Des Ship. You may have heard of him. He's fished for England for a very long time indeed. He's won five uh, gold, team gold medals for England. He's one of the most respected anglers on the commercial circuit. Now, Des is occasionally known to be slightly unhappy when he draws a bad peg. I have to tell you that this morning, he's not overly happy with the draw he's got. In fact, he has been moaning just a little bit. I'm sure he'll cheer up when he gets a bite in a minute. Let's just move round. Peg 16 is Belgian's angler, Hans Slagers. Also a very highly respected match angler. Um, he's won club competitions at the absolute highest level. And an interesting fact about all four of these guys, all four of them fished in last year's World Championships in Croatia. Well, those are the 16 pegs of our internationals today. You can see that little gap between them, but that is filled. In the old days, that, that wasn't. That created a bit of an advantage or a disadvantage for some. But uh, modern fisher mania, those peg positions are filled by the juniors. Let's find out who the stars of, of tomorrow are with Ali Shaw. Yes, yeah, some real stars of tomorrow, you would imagine, here. So let me take you through them, starting on peg number one, where James Allen is fishing this afternoon. Now, James, whose nickname is Chicken Wings, uh, is a two-time England trialist, but he didn't make the England squad, uh, so he's really keen to make his mark here this afternoon. Moving on to peg number two is Danny Slack. Uh, now, Danny uh, is um, lives and breathes fishing. He works at the Aston Park Fisheries at the weekend. And at three years ago, when Danny was just 12 years old, he just missed out on a place in Fishermania by 80 grams. But he's here this afternoon. And on peg number three is uh, Tom Edwards. Now, Tom is this year's individual junior champion, so uh, we will be keeping a really close eye on him. On peg number four is Christian Jones. Uh, now, Christian fished here uh, two years ago in the final where he came third. And we must remember, of course, that peg number four is where Samantha Sim won for the ladies yesterday. So, you know, will that have any bearing on the way things go today? Who knows? Morgan Davison is on peg number five, and what a talent he is. Uh, Morgan won gold in last year's Anglin Ang Anglers Trust uh, National, and he won silver and bronze this year. So we'll certainly be keeping a look out for him as well. And last, but certainly not least, on peg number six is Sam Collette. Now, Sam was here two years ago, too, and I, I think that familiarity really helps to ease the nerves of these young anglers. So, yeah, an intriguing competition in prospect over here with the juniors. Thank you, Ali. We have some consummate professionals taking part in Fishermania, none more so than Ali. Yesterday was in flip-flops for the 80-degree weather. Today, she's looked at the forecast, and she has those Wellington boots on. Well, we've come here to see fish being caught. The first action is down there on peg 11. Vincent Walsh, who's come from uh, County Donegal, representing Ireland, is the first man to make a mark. Remember, we have the weigh-ins every half an hour. It's the cumulative total of the two anglers representing the country, which takes home the Fishermania International title. Good one for uh, Belgians as well, down there on peg eight, Eric Deventi, who I think actually is over the border in Luxembourg, is where he resides, uh, laboratory assistant by day. On the weekend, he's flown over here and he's representing Belgium. Four times Belgium, Angler of the Year. Well, on the opposite side of the lake to Eric Deventi is his fellow countryman, Hans Slagers, who was part of the European uh, team champions uh, winners in 2001, vastly experienced, still only 46 years of age, which is relatively young for an angler. I guess you don't bear these feet. You were saying yesterday we had a 22-year-old that was challenging a 32-year-old, but the oldest in yesterday's competition was 53. And you, you can be at the top of your game for a long time. Yeah. Mm. You know, Stevie Gardner is on the bank today for Italy. He's... he's 30 years for sure. Well, is, uh, is, I think Steve's in his sixes now, and if it weren't for his shoulder, he'd probably still be a team. Yeah. I don't, you know, at the end of the day, like, you get to an age, and all of a sudden, it's not about your fishing brain, your fishing ability, it's whether you can physically do it. 
I mean, Stevie come to fish last year in Croatia in that water with his no. shoulder. Right. It's only that that, ke that keeps him out. Y your angling brain never changes. John Harvey there, we saw fishing for yeah. in, in the individual final yesterday, and he really struggled on the pole. And, and you know, everybody said, oh, he, he, mm. he, he, he should be practising uh, for today's match, but he wasn't. He, he, he kept trying to win the match. Oh, of course he did. Yeah. <laughs> he was trying to win the Fisher made a champion. Yeah. Uh, three and a half kilos in the last half hour as well. He did. This Just very quickly, uh, Keith, before we have our, mm. our first weigh-in, explain the rules today. It's different from the main event that we had yesterday. It's folk fishing only, for a start. There's no ledgering allowed, no putting weights on the bottom. Mm -hmm. you, you, your float mustn't be overshotted. It's got to sit naturally in the water. You can only use natural ground, which you can use sweet corn, for example, but you can't use pellets. I don't you use bread either, Tom, can you? No, we can't. Can't no. use bread. Uh, the Belgians actually bought some bloodworm because they're allowed in World Championship. They're not allowed on this match because it's fishery rules. They brought their own. They brought their own. I'd love to see that coming through customs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. What have you got in that set? <laughs> It'll work. Oh, we've, <laughs> we've had some interesting tales about that, trying <laughs> to get bloodworm yeah, jumped exactly, through customs yeah. in the past. And, and normally, World Championships are fished on points. And you get maximum, minimum, minimum points for winning. You get one point for winning and however many points it is for last. This is a total cumulative weight because points are just a bit confusing to work out. So it's, and, and there could be a, a four-way tie. So this is all done on, com on total overall weight of the two anglers. There we go. That's it all explained. Now you know the rules. Well, we say that these guys are sportsmen. We, we say they're athletes as well. When, when you're a footballer, you, you see these days the footballers are all wide up and uh, the scientists behind the scenes can tell exactly what they're doing. What we've done today, we've put a heart rate monitor on each of the anglers out there. There are 16 anglers, and those are the monitors on each of the anglers. The top number is the current heartbeat. To give you an idea, when a footballer warms up, the coach, the fitness trainer, tries to get him to around 140. Uh, below, the number below, is the percentage of where they're working. So obviously, you're running around this lake at breakneck speed, you're going to be at 100%. If you're sitting there, you're probably going to be about 50%. So this is where the guys are at the moment. You see most of them are kind of 70% of their maximum, which is probably like a very gentle walk on a treadmill at the gym. Mm. Wow. And when they start catching, that'll shoot up. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When the pressure goes on towards the end, when the manager gets in your ear, it'll go up as well. <laughs> Who's the most laid-back one there? Can you see John the Harvey. Is it John Harvey, yeah. number nine, Big John? Yeah. John on peg nine maybe doesn't look like the natural sportsman, but he's obviously the coolest. Yeah. Yeah. He's also, I think, the youngest. He's 30 years of age, so that, that does help when it comes it's to the It's a ring, is not it? Because it won't even move it. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> that is uh, Will Raisin. He's at 70% of his maximum heart rate, uh, Will Raisin. Will, of course, is down there on peg seven. He's only 40 years of age. So you have to take the weight, the age into the equation as well. Right, <laughs> There you go, for another one. Mm. There you go. See if the heart rate goes up when you hear that klaxon behind. It's gone. He's used to competition, he's gone down. That <laughs> relaxes him. Yeah, I've got something in I'll the bag. Yeah, let them go. They'll chill now for a moved, couple of minutes. But, but there's, there's fizzing going on in Will's Peg. We never saw a bubble yet. No. Whether it's the, the ground bait they've used, mm, where they've put it, it's just amazing that these guys can make it work. Yeah. And 16 anglers who qualified by beating at least 130 other anglers, some of them have been in multiple times, didn't get that happening. It must be a change in condition. <coughs> well, one of the things, it's going up, it's going up. One, one of the things I couldn't work out what they were doing yesterday was they were offering soiling. And I didn't quite get that. These, these fish are pellet fish. Now I bet they put fish meal based ground bait in, and that's why they're getting there. There you go. His heart rate was 127 when he started catching that fish. Seven. Oh, and it's shooting up. He has got a heart. He's burning calories now. Pete's going to tell me. There you go. And that's when the heart really starts beating when he gets the fish off the hook. He gets it in the keep net. You're going down again now, look. There we go. That's incredible, that. You wouldn't know that was happening, would you? No, you wouldn't know. I can tell you the, uh, the top four anglers so far, all from different countries when it comes down individually, but it's the, the weight of the two anglers representing the country combined. So far, England's total weight is 4.125 kilos. Three kilos of that has been caught by Will Raisin over there on peg seven. And then Holland together have got 3.65 kilos. That's basically down to Peter Friedrichs, who's got 2.52 kilos on uh, peg five. It's between that uh, peg five and peg eight. Eric Devente of Belgium has caught uh, an individual catch of 2.4 
kilos for Belgium, who've got 2.6 kilos. And then Wales, well, only 2.4. And then, but as you can see, they're, they're the eight countries taking part. There's only four kilos between them at uh, the start of Fishermania after the, uh, the first weigh-in. Down on the uh, English pegs, peg seven <laughs> will raise it. It is funny, isn't it? <laughs> it is funny. Every time we go to, he's got a fish on it. Just you just get used to it, don't you? It's, it's like Jamie Hughes yesterday in the vigil event. Yeah. Every time we put a camera on him, there's a fish, fish being caught. That's that's will raising for you. As a as a manager of a team, Tommy, do you set your anglers depending on where they're positioned on the lake or their peg position? Do you set them a number of fish they have to catch in half an hour? Or do you set them a weight? Um, it, it's what you do. You, you let them. I'm a great believer in they're they're there because they're the best fishermen. So let them fish. Mm -hmm. And what you have to do as a manager is just manage them from a from a, a view and over six fishermen. So if you've got six fishermen like like I have, all I try and do is let them fish, sit behind and watch them over the six anglers, and try and take the points and from different people and add it to the other anglers to try and get them all catching fish. After the first way in England, have a lead of just oh, or just under half a kilo over Holland, who are in second place. Holland with 3.65 kilos, England with 4.125 kilos. Well, Raisin is the uh, individual angler who's had the best catch so far. Exactly three kilos during the first half an hour of the event. And he's got another one on. As I said, he's a team event because his, his partner, Des Schiff, is on the, uh, the less fancied and favoured peg 15. And Des had a catch of only 1.125 kilos, but it comes down to a proper team effort. There will always be a leader because they're a better position, but it comes down to the other guy catching as well. Can't get despondent if individually not having a good day. No, it does have to fish a very different match. Yeah. He's got to just catch what he can and see how it goes. And if, if things start going wrong for him, then they'll have to change slightly. We're presently doing the weighing from the second half an hour of, of this event. Let's get down to the water's edge and find out what's happening. Rachel Brooks. Yes, Rob, and uh, if Tony wants to get the keep net out, we can weigh in uh, Claudio Guicciardi's net for this half hour. He had a really good first half hour. It was 2.325 kilos. So he's emptying these now into the net. And we're going to have a look here. Team manager Steve Gardner has just joined us as well to have a, have a look and see what the catch is. Let's weigh those. Mike and have a, have a look and see what's in the net this time around. Here we go. 925 grams. He's not as big as the first half hour, 925 grams, but he is still catching consistently. Steve Gardner has just come over here to join and have a look as well and see what's going on. But uh, yes, 925 for Cardio and Rob Hughes, I think you've got your way in. Well, I must say it is incredibly exciting down here in this section. It's been a little bit like a game of tennis between Will Raisin for England and Eric Deventi in Peg 8 next door. And uh, Will's just playing a fish as we speak at the moment, so we don't want to disturb him on that. But it will be in the net very, very soon. He's got a very interesting method of netting his fish. He actually nets them with the net below the surface a lot of the time. And there it is, Kel Surprise, Will Raisin has caught yet another one. And just watching the proceedings early on here, it was amazing. It was like a game of tennis. In the middle, Will's got one, Eric's got one. Will's got one, Eric's got one. For that last way at three kilos, Will managed a fairly decent tench, which really bumped him up a little bit. But the big news at the moment is he's still catching. Let's find out where we are. Net is on its way out, and it sounds like another decent bag. Bit of a mixed grill. Primarily carp, a couple of small roach. He's had a spell where, unfortunately, a few fell off on the way in. They've been a bit finicky on the feeding, uh, but he's certainly still there. It's another great weight. That's two and a half kilos. Two kilos, 500. Two kilos, 500. Wow, that's a brilliant weight. Bryn, how's it going over there? 
Well, it's been very, very busy here on peg nine for John Harvey. We mentioned how well he finished yesterday. Well, he's had a great start to this day, to be honest with you as well. I'm very interested to see just how heavy this bag is because I have a suspicion that this might be the biggest bag of this particular half hour. So if we can get the bag out, please, as uh, John just prepares to put the pole back out again shortly. He's still been catching even after the hoot has gone as well. But this, I think there's got to be double figures in terms of the number of fish in this bag. Now we see what the size is going to be and what impact that's going to have on the Welsh total. John from Risca. Quite a lot in there. So let's have a little look. This, so this is Peg 9. John Harvey of Wales. 1 kilo 750 grams. So there you go, 1 and 3 quarter kilos for John Harvey of Wales. Proudly representing Wales, John Harvey is beginning to find form. He is as well. You've heard a couple of people mention stocky calf, and it doesn't mean, although they are chubby little things, it doesn't mean they're chubby little things, it means they're new stock. Mm -hmm. They've come in, they've been in, I think, about a month, haven't they, mm -hmm. Tom? They've, they've, they've like put that, the fish yeah. in, yeah. And what they've done, they've very carefully introduced the fish. They've not just taken all the fish out and put a load in, They've introduced them a bit at a time, oh, so they'll climatise to the water. Will Rosen's caught. Yeah, it's just, that's unusual, isn't it? That's a, that looks a good fish, that one. We, we are doing the sums behind the scenes. I can tell you in the last half an hour, Will Rosen had a total weigh of two and a half kilos, and he missed, he said he's missed three mm -hmm. fish during yeah. the course mm -hmm. of the day as well. Yeah. He's just getting bites that quick. When we, when we watched him just there, it was incredible how many times he struck while we were watching. So there are obviously lots of fish in this bag. And, and, and uh, it's the only angler I've seen, though, that's actually throwing casters in. Yeah. And, and that noise, because they are stockies, the, 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 the use of pellets being thrown at them, and throwing, I think throwing them casters in is quite uh, an important part, over top of the bait that is already put in. It's clearly a charity with the fish. It's, it's interesting, when you look at the, the leaderboard, there's nearly one from every team in the top. In, in the top eight, I don't think there's a... I, I can't quite see that there's... Two nations will we'll confirm the leaderboard yeah. in a moment. I think Wales have got two in the top eight. Two of the top eight. If I, here we it's go. Just. We've done some number crunching in the background, and this is the cumulative weight so far of the two anglers from either country. England have increased their lead now. It, uh, it's a 1.65 kilo difference between England and Wales. Wales uh, collectively are doing okay because John Harvey, with well, his individual, will be in third place. He's got 1.75 kilos in the last half an hour and his partner Lee Edwards had uh, just over half a kilo so together so far this afternoon 4.9 kilos Belgium well they're, they're taking to this event they had 4.85 kilos Eric Devente had a good half an hour he got uh, one and a half kilos just about uh, Italy also it's different for these guys Italy in fourth place 4.825 kilos uh, it was Claudia Guicciardi who had uh, 0.92 kilos individually. Holland were fancied, but they're down in fifth place. That's a bit of a surprise, isn't it? So close, though. They're, 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 not, even a, they're not even a small fish behind. Uh -huh. yeah. Second place. We were hoping it was going to be a close event right the way through. What you can't discount is England's genius. Well, it's Will Razor's yeah. pilot match almost, isn't it? <laughs> in a nice way. He's, uh, I mean, he's, he's got five and a half kilos, and um, he's just spoil it match. He'd be winning, the be winning the team event on his own. On his own, yeah. Well, this is how, if it was an individual event, they would be faring today. Will Raisin, head and shoulders above the rest. But Eric De Vente is uh, really doing well for Belgium. They're, they're one of the new countries in, involved mm. in Fisher Mania. We mentioned before, eight countries, five of the top eight in the world are competing here today. New to Italy as well. John Harvey's been here two days in a row because he was part of the uh, individual Fisher Mania yesterday. And Dieter Friedrichs down there on uh, Peg. Five is having a decent day for Holland. And John again, look. Peg nine, John Harvey from Wales. Well, the, the, I, I think for another team to win it, apart from England, they need both anglers to catch. Now, John's doing catching, and Lee on peg one, which when you look at the actual peg numbers, is not the best end, but they've got the right angler probably on that yeah. peg. And if anybody's going to get them out of out of that, Lee, Lee's going to do that. But the, any team to beat England at the moment, they're going to need two catchers. Because Will's catching he's better than two men. Correct. Yeah. Or him slow down. Yeah, yeah. And he ain't going to slow down. Well. I don't think he knows that, does he? No, he, 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 he has this knack of keeping fish feeding. I mean, sometimes, obviously, it's, it's not going to work. But when you watch him... I mean, he used to have a technique on his, in, on his home water at Gold Valley where he'd feed in the winter, 
the whistle would go, he'd put his feet in, and he'd go for breakfast. Yeah. And he'd yeah. come back two hours later and empty the lake of roach. Yeah. Just let it rest in, yeah. in all the time when they start feeding yeah. and everything like that. Significant catch there for Brian Clark. Yeah, it's a bonus. Uh, I mean, all day he's only caught uh, 0.25 kilos yeah. of fish. He may well have uh, doubled his weight there. Yeah, and, I, and I, the I expected more skimmers to be caught, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm surprised. I saw a few yesterday. Is, is this just a repeat photo? <laughs> He's so quick, isn't he? Yeah. Well, this is Will Raisin. He's on peg seven. You were just double checking, Keith, as we were in the break. Peg seven yesterday belonged to Roland Lucas. Yep. And Roland had the 12th best catch mm -hmm. of 18 anglers. And as we were saying before, the weather conditions have not changed considerably, no. have they? No, the, the one thing, that I, I don't know if it's different, but I, I did say um, when we finished um, broadcasting tight lines on Friday evening, I went out in the studio here, and we overlooked the lake, and there were carp with their head just sticking out of the water, and they were definitely eating some kind of natural food. Now, if that was one hatch, they would have bloated themselves on that. <laughs> they may have been a bloodworm hatching from the bottom. It could have been a terrestrial bloating, but they were feeding on naturals. Whether if that didn't happen last night, which the weather was... In layman's terms is what you're telling, because there are a lot of anglers out there understand exactly what you're saying, yeah. but what you're telling to those who don't know about angling, they've had a day to digest their food. Exactly, exactly. And today they're going to be more dependent on anglers' food for their diet. And they're, they're saying they're, they're shit with the fish. What he's also trying to tell us is yesterday they had an indigestion. It'll be mm -hmm. interesting to see if, if there's a start to love feeding cats and yeah. this float now, like, like, like Will was. Because looking around the lake, it looks like other anglers from other countries have started yeah. doing it as well. And, and I'm sure that's to make a noise, but he, he's catching them so quick. Loose feed in his pot as well. Probably just cast. Yeah, maybe. No ground bait in there, I don't no, think. Uh, Unless no. it was a little bit of just ground bait to, to take. Maybe. Not even to take yeah. them down. It didn't look like it, though, no, did it? No, it didn't. Taps that out. Oh, same oh. came out the same pot. They're cast. Because that, look how he's throwing them yeah. as well. He's throwing them underarm, so yeah. they all go in a little, like yeah. on a dinner plate. It takes from doing that. How that long did that take? Well, I don't know, 10 seconds. Not long, were it? No. It, it hadn't really settled. We should have a sweep to see how long the camera can be on him Without before he catches a fish. Yeah. That's a good fish, that. These are three different angles of the way that he is catching down there on peg seven. Now, what's interesting, they're actually decent-sized carp and, and other fish, these, as well. He's not catching, he's not seem to be catching the little stockies, no, he's he's catching the bigger ones. The better stockies. And that's what, that's why Jamie won this thing. Jamie caught, right. Jamie caught bigger fish than Connor. And, and uh, Connor probably had more fish. Oh, I would yeah. say definitely, yeah. That might be a tenth, that one. Tom, it's good, definitely a bonus good, fish. There's a good chance of that being a tenth. I'm trained on bottom left box. Yeah, me too. Yeah, well, I am, <laughs> I am as well. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bigger fish. Here we Made go. a big hole in the Here water. Here we go. So we're going for we a tent, shall we? Um, a tent, though, is it? No, it's a car. And he's got a on the ground. Yeah. That, yeah. that is the, the hooter that uh, reverberates around the lake. Doesn't disturb the fish, doesn't disturb the anglers too much. What it does tell them is that we are due the third way in. Leaders are England. It's Des Ship. That's a bonus fish. Yeah. yeah. That's one of those bonus tench tongs. That's the, the better fish. I'm more interested in super sad throwing casters in like uh, like mm. Will will, but I mean that's what, pound and a half? Good pound and a half. Yeah. This is after three weigh-ins. England have they uh, extended their lead. There's a difference now between England and Belgium of two point seven kilos in the last half an hour uh, will raise and surprise surprise had 1.6 kilos but individually what a great catch in half an hour from eric deventi of belgium 3.125 oh. wow. kilos ensuring that they cement second place at uh, the moment unfortunately for him his fellow countryman hans Slag has caught nothing now it's not a newt in the last half an hour. In third place are Holland, who are favoured to give England a bit of a challenge today. But as you can see between the top, well, the top five teams, there's not a great deal of difference. And uh, individually, John Harvey got 0.95 kilos. Wasn't too bad for Jürgen Spearings of Holland, 1.22 kilos. And sure, Holland are there, there in third place.
We've seen a lot of uh, fish caught by Will Raisin of England today, but his fellow countryman over there on Peg 15, Des Ship, is certainly playing uh, his part. Des had a catch of uh, 2.025 kilos, which was worse than Nick Howell and worse than Eric Deventer, which lost Tommy a pound in the last nice commercial break. Yeah. That's a nice fish, that one. In fact, Will was fourth on that last way. You see that, that Des, no, Des what, and, what and Eric beat know? him. Nick Howell beat him, too. And, and yeah. Nick had a really terrible start. Yeah, it did. But that Nick of Ireland has overtaken Vinnie Walsh. And, in fact, they've, they've both joined eight. Yeah. Here's Dieter. Dieter Friedrichs. He's from Schinveld in Holland. They uh, made the long journey from Holland yesterday through the uh, through the tunnel. I think a lot of these are because they started all feeding casting on top of the main line. They've, they've watched what Will were doing, they've all copied them. And, and you can see straight away that they're, they're catching more fish. You've actually been wary of loose feeding casters because mm. what you don't want them to do is come up off the bottom and start getting skittish. Well, I think that's why they're looking a lot. I think they're trying to get them in the peg by making a noise with the casters. Here's hands with a foot technique. Yeah. Yeah, again. As long as it's in the net, it don't matter how you do it, is it? No. Nope. As long as he gives his country a leg up. <laughs> he puts his soul into it, though. <laughs> I go out, I go out. I'm just looking at the, the, t the individuals, and there's still nobody in the top few. We're two, we're two teams, isn't nope. it? There's two Columbo, actually. I had a hunch that Columbo would catch something. <laughs> oh. I'm not going to stop these for you, I will. There is Will Raisin. Keeping it very, very serious. Will Raisin on peg seven. He's had an excellent day. He's had a total catch during the course of the day of just over seven kilos, which is helping England to that lead. Collectively, they've caught 10.67 kilos. Eric again, he's catching, I'll tell you, I'll I'll catching bigger fish, Eric, you know. But I'll tell you what I have noticed. I've never, it's in this right. event, I've never seen the managers as active. No. You look behind, like well, Steve, we, we meet, we meet all talking. Uh, Mark's been behind the English lads already. And you notice the managers now are doing their work, passing on the information between angler and angler. And, and, and I bet you that the main tactic is throwing casters in. Mm. This is man versus fish. Nice fish. Yeah, there's a bonus fish. Nice fish and good matching. The Belgians are really dark horses, weren't they, Chris? I, I, I didn't um, think they'd do as well as they, as no, they are. No, the, the good fishermen, Keith. Yeah. Good fishermen adapt. They'll have watched the match yesterday yeah. and, and worked it out what you've got to do. And they're all good fishermen. You know, it's, it's, it's a case of just getting the balance right. But the only way they're going to beat the English lads now, that's a tench, that looks a nice fish. Peg 11, that's Vincent Walsh of Ireland. The only way they're going to beat him is to get two anglers catching. They've got to have two men to mm. beat, just to beat Will at the moment. And with Des catching a few fish as well, it's even going to be hard. But they, they desperately need two men in that top five to, to, to compete against them. There you go. Milo's catching since Steve's gone down and sorted him out. He's right on his shoulder as well, isn't he? Steve Gardner, who is the, uh, the guest manager of the Italian team. One, one tip, if anybody wants to watch a top angler in the angle, you always ask, if you don't mind them watching, stand exactly where Steve Gardner is. Stand directly, directly. behind him, not to one side, Correct. because all you're doing is keeping one profile visible to the fish. What you don't want to do, and the number of times I've had to say this to cameraman, Rob, we've been filled with dollars, for goodness sake, don't move around. The worst oh. thing you do is move around. One of, my, one of my tips is, I always go to the angler behind like that, yeah. and if they turn their head, they're going to slap on back. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your float and talk to me, looking at your float or your tip. It's a nice fish there for me, though. TV lesson from Milo Colombo, the uh, grand old master, 62 years of age. Yeah, you can still fish, can't lad. Yeah. You don't lose that, though, Tom. Your no. eyes might go a little no. bit, you might lose a little bit of strength and, and, and stuff like that, but what, that's more than compensated for by our watercraft that we learned years ago on natural fishery. It's all about our experience. It, I, I believe it's all about uh, your body yeah. and whether you can fit, whether your body's fit enough to do it. That's it. I mean, you look at Dennis. Dennis still wins loads of matches. Dennis White, you're talking about. Yeah. But he's, he's look at the heart rate. Right. Look, 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 watch. But he's still he's a couple of pegs everything. down. Peg 14 representing Scotland. Oh, that's a good fit. Is Brian Clark. You can see his heart monitor on the left to give an indication of uh, the tench. Sean. 
It might be a tench as well, the way it went for those margins. In fact, we've seen more tench caught today than we yeah. did yesterday, didn't we? But that's because they're feeding neat worms. Yeah, it must be. And casters rather than... Rather than yeah, must than be. A lot of soil went in yesterday, but neat worm and caster rather than... That's probably... That, that must be a tench, that. Mm, you think so? Yeah. But at that age, you know, we go back to your body. As long as you can physically do it, your brain's still yeah. efficient, you're still brilliant. I mean, it's like I had my eyes done last year, Soccer Fish Veterans World Championships. Mm -hmm. I, I had, you know, I had it done. That's a nice That's fish. Sharp, yeah. But so as long as, you, as long as your body's all right. You, there's you, the excitement. He's got it yeah. in the net. But there's the excitement kicking in. Wow, look. You can, green. Can you see that, oh, that yeah. clock ticking around on the left-hand side? Yeah. He's now in the cardiovascular Up to 74% of his maximum. Wow. And there we'll go. Whew. Down it will go. <laughs> there yeah. it goes, look. That's a sigh in numbers. He's back into relax yeah. mode, doesn't he? Yeah. He's got something in the in the keep net there. That's actually incredible. That, oh, that's yeah. working. I'm with Sam Collette just now at college, I should say, and um, Sam was in fourth, but after that last weigh-in, he got a quite remarkable uh, 3.775, so he's leapt into first place. Uh, Sam, you were here two years ago. How different is it this year? Uh, it's going a lot better. <laughs> That's the first thing I want to say, but uh, just hope we can keep it going, so I'm not going to get too excited yet. And what makes it different this year? Is it your technique? Is it just more experience? Uh, I think it's a bit of both, to be honest. A bit... Hang on. <laughs> That's quite impressive, isn't it? He can chat to us live in Sky Sports. He can catch himself a big fish. What does that look like to you, then? Uh, about sort of around a pound. These are the things, though, because there are so many small fish this year that these are the sort of things that really make such a difference. And depending on what it... Well, that's, that's a pound, isn't it? But depending on how it comes in, we've got 950. Tom Edwards has currently got the biggest fish over at uh, this side of the lake. But it's things like that that really can swing it here. Sam, well done, and we'll talk to you a little bit later on. Well, there we go, after two weigh-ins, which is two hours of fishing for our stars of the future. Sam Collins has... Uh, a decent lead over Christian Jones. Tom Edwards doing okay as well. Let's hope that Morgan Davis can pick up a few fish. Will, during the course of the day, has uh, just over eight kilos. But we've actually seen him lose fish as well, haven't we? We've seen him lose three previously. And yet, uh, it's, it's uh, gone up to 73%. No, 74, it's still going up. Wow, yeah. <laughs> Don't make him angry because his Obviously. heart rate goes No, don't make room. him angry. Whatever Mark. you do, don't make him angry. Uh, Mark had his told him something he didn't necessarily agree uh, with. I agree with that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't make him angry. He actually had quite a quiet last half an hour. He had less than a kilo yeah. of fish. In fact, uh, his total weight for the day has now been uh, bettered because Eric Deventi of well, Belgium yeah. has had an individual catch of 8.2 kilos. But when we add everything together, this is what we get. England with a combined weight of 13.67 yeah. kilos. That's because Des Ship yeah. had the best individual weight in the last uh, 30 minutes. That's just over two kilos. Holland in second place. Well, they have won the World Championships this year, and they were much fancy to give England uh, a bit of a challenge today. Dieter Friedrichs has had a good catch today. Six kilos individually, 1.2 kilos in the last half an hour. Belgium. New to the event, but they have uh, Eric Deventi, who's in wonderful form. He's caught more fish totally today, 8.2 kilos, than any other angler, including in the last half an hour, 1.22 kilos. And poor old Scotland, they are still holding up the leaderboard of the teams after four weigh-ins. This is a team event. It is a pairs event. It's how the two representatives of the country fare. Uh, this is how it would be if it were, were to be an individual event. Eric Deventi is having an absolutely wonderful afternoon in his uh, first event here in Staffordshire. But you can see why England are leading because Will Raisin and Des Ship individually doing well. Collectively, they're doing brilliance. Everybody thought they were going to win it. And it's looking good again for them, isn't it? Well, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> two, of the, two of the best three anglers in the world are fishing for England, mm. um, which is unfortunate for other teams. And... Uh, and now Des has sorted his peg out, he's got him feeding, he's catching, he's catching them all. And what we've what we said all along is you need two people in that top five and, and all, all, all's got two in top five, England. Ooh, that is a bonus fish, that one. That's a good fish, that, Keith. But this, this is... 
this is a case of concentration as well and waiting because you have to be confident that the fish will show up mm. and not do anything that stops them showing up. And, and the difference was yesterday, because there was a chance other people catching on the feeder, so the anglers saw a chance of catching a few fish on the feeder, they chucked the feeder across, gave up on the pole line. Yeah. They weren't feeding it, they weren't preparing it. And that's what happened. Exactly what happened. I think some other teams have done quite well, uh, to be honest with you. I think that considering they've never been here before, like it Italy and Belgium in particular, I think they're doing really well. Yeah. But what you've got to re remember as well this, this time, people might say, oh, well, it's, it's in England, England have been able to practice. They couldn't practice this time. Yeah. So it's completely different, different fish. And they're still dominating it, really. Vinny again. Well, Vinny's fighting for him. In the last weigh-in, he had uh, just under two kilos, a combined weight today for Vincent Walsh of Ireland, 4.725 kilos. Yes, Eric de Venti. Eric de Venti of Belgium, who individually has been the most outstanding fisherman uh, today. Totally, is at 8.2 kilos. I think it was Bryn that was joking earlier on that uh, he's travelled light. Give us an insight into the equipment. What's in the bag is what they say in golf. Don't they? What was he brought with him? Well, you see that, that roost alongside him. Mm -hmm. That's He's got a couple of, couple of rods on there. They'll, they'll be waggler rods because you're not allowed to ledger. Yeah. And, and the rest of it is just pole top sections. So that, that's Milo's kit, I believe, there, isn't it? That's right, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's Milo's kit. Now, all those tubes were full of poles and pole sections. And you can see just on the edge of the picture there, you've got the roost. That's got his pole rigs on. Now, he might have three and four identical kit rigs on individual pole sections. So if he, he gets a tangle, breaks look off, doesn't bother about re up, puts it down, picks up another rig identical next to him. And that's Milo uh, Colombo there who was saying, uh, that is Milo's occupation, isn't it? He, he deals in that kind of thing. Yeah, puts it all together. Makes loads of money out of it. <laughs> well, the halfway point, effectively, of the international fisher mania, and we can now confirm this is how the table stands. England lead by five and a quarter kilos, 5.25 kilos, ahead of Italy, who have exactly 11 kilos after five weigh-ins. Belgium, well, Eric Devent is in brilliant form. If only Hans Schlagers can start catching over there on peg 16. Wales are doing OK. John uh, Harvey individually is, uh, would be in fourth place, but likewise, John's partner, Lee Edwards, needs to start catching. Holland were much fancied. I think they're probably underachieving given the reputation they have. They've got a world title, of course, next to their name. Ireland, France and Scotland may, uh, well, France have got half of the catch, haven't they, of, uh, of England effectively. So it's looking as though it could be a top three between England, Italy and Belgium at the moment. Those maybe can't be uh, ruled out of it. Now that is what it is collectively as a pairs competition. If it were an individual competition, this is how things would stand. Eric Deventi has had the outstanding day so far. Very close between him and Will Raisin when it comes down to it. And they're sitting alongside each other on peg seven and eight. Des Ship on peg 15, which, which fished well yesterday in the individual event. And Des Ship is playing his part just over seven kilos. John Harvey of Wales, the second day in a row that he's been here. He was in the main event for Fisher Mania yesterday. And Dieter Friedrichs has had 6.15 kilos. At the moment, he's had the biggest fish of the day 1.3 for an individual fish. Is this the point in the afternoon, we haven't seen as many fish mm. caught in the last 30 minutes or so, is this the point in the afternoon where the tactics and, and the belief in changing the way they yes. angle comes into play? So you, three hours gone nearly. Mm -hmm. In the match last year, there'd now be teams thinking when, not if, when, they're going to go down the side mm -hmm. and look for the bigger carp. Now those bigger carp, there's no big carp in it. The biggest carp in it has about three kilos, mm -hmm. seven pounds. Now, that means they've not got those big fish to fish for. The fish aren't used to coming into the margins like they do mm. on, on commercial fisheries normally because th no, there's, there's where the fish look. And, and now they're... So they've got to work out how to get the best out of what they've got. Now, 
somebody might decide to throw a wagger up, fish towards the far bank. Mm -hmm. I've not seen anybody feeding I'm that line consistently. I'm surprised nobody's actually even trying it at the moment, I Me must admit. Too. Especially if you're behind, sometimes you've got to say, right, we've got to have a bit of a gamble here. Yeah. Um, uh, and and so, so, I'm really surprised nobody's fed the line or mm. had a go. I'm really surprised at that. But Des is fishing a cracking match now. He's got so from an area where, like we just said, he's surrounded by people struggling, and he's just making it look easy. But like I said, that's their shit for you. Well, he looks cool there. The graphic you can see on the uh, the bottom of the screen gives you an indication as to how his heart is beating. He's got a heartbeat of about 120. If he was on a, on a treadmill and he was uh, going through an exercise <laughs> routine, I don't think he's ever seen a treadmill. I'm going to say I'd love to see him on one. Apart from when he passed uh, a couple of gyms. But he, in the 120, <laughs> when you take his weight, his uh, age away from 220 and you divide it all up, that tells you what he's working. He's working at 68% of his capacity there. So it's, it, it's still putting in a fair amount of effort, but it, it gives you a, an indication of how cool he is under the pressure. Yeah. So I'm inclined not to drive a forklift once and he's working at doing that. That's about the most energy I've photo. seen him spend. Yeah, a yeah, photo. photo. Yeah. <laughs> this is Will Raisin of England. He was having a brilliant day. Over nine kilos of fish caught. And he laid down the foundations for what England hope will be another success here at Fishermania 22, the international event. <clears throat> Been a quiet day for Scotland. Over on uh, Peg Six, Jamie Masson. What we related have, uh, to the great Don Masson. Don, exactly, Don's his uncle. Yeah. What, what we we have um, learned about Jamie, on many occasions, he's come good late in the day. Now he mm. does specialise in catching big carp. Mm. To be fair, he, he's a match angler who likes to catch big carp, but. He's always going to be dangerous in the last half of a match. Uh, some fisherman, this kid, I'll tell you, he, 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 is, he comes from my area and he's, I mean, at one time, when he probably was a bit more fishing, when he was fishing seven days a week, he'd win five and six matches mm. in the week. He, he was an awesome fisherman. Here is England's Des ship. After five weigh-ins, England were at the leaders with a combined weight of nine Point, sorry, combined weight of 16.25 kilos due to the excellence of Will Raisin and Des Ship. I think we can go down to the water's edge now, and the man in the know is Rob Hughes. Well, it's been very quiet down here, actually. Two ways already done, 150 and 200 odd grams. However, one man has picked his pace up a little bit. Guess who that is? Will Raisin. Let's have a look. We know that there was a 175 gram deficit in the individual title race between him and Eric next door. And we'll just find out what's going on. We've seen one tension, one cart for sure. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got a skimmer in there, actually. So that's looking good in comparison with what's come out so far in this section. And we have one kilo. One kilo, 700. One kilo, 700. Now, one kilo, 700 is a significant weight when you hear the next news, and that is Eric Deventi has nothing at all to weigh in in this sector. Well, social media will be buzzing about how well England are doing yet again in this Fishermania International. The team of uh, Will Raisin and Des mm. Ship now have a cumulative weight of 18.625 kilos. That's uh, a difference of 6. 25 kilos over Ireland, who have bumped up into second place. Italy's still doing okay. Belgium, it's gone a little bit quiet for. In the last half an hour, the most impressive weight was from Vincent Walsh, who had just over two kilos. But Will Raisin again weighing in with 1.7 kilos. And the reason that Belgium have bumped down the board is that Eric Deventi, who's been having a brilliant day individually, caught absolutely nothing mm. in the space of 30 minutes. And that shows how close it is. As I said with the F1 analogy, You've got Mercedes England mm -hmm. out of it in front, but look at the battle for second. Yeah. Holland are one right, fish man. behind in sixth, yeah. are one fish behind, one decent fish behind Ireland who are second. 
How must I be? Because it, it's, it's a few right, right. second as well. And the, the, the pride of, 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 of just beating all the other countries. It is a, it is a, a two-stage event, really. It's hard to say that. You shouldn't be able to say it. But I mean, England probably never admit better. it, but a lot of these managers will probably come here thinking, right, we know England's going to win it, but we've got to beat everybody well, else and come second. second. Yeah. 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 Well, this is individually how the Anglers have third during the course of the afternoon. Interesting that last half an hour, only two of the 16 Anglers got more than a kilo in their net. One was Will raising 1.7 kilos, Vincent Wolf with a two, point, uh, two and a bit kilos. But uh, Will raising well, he's been outstanding, almost 11 kilos individually. Eric Deventy got nothing in the last wave. But Vincent Walsh is moving up there as well and he's settling into the surroundings. Eric's catching again. Eric that's a, that's a good fish. Again after good half fish. an hour without anything in the net. It's, it, it does seem weird that you can't catch a fish yeah. on here in half an hour with all these small fish. Yes. So, so something happened. Now whether a couple of big fish moved in his peg and spoilt it for him, I'm not quite sure. Or a couple of tench or something like that. But it's weird that he's been catching well and, and, and William had a, a kilo 700 and he's here again. I don't think it was a big eye. I don't think it was a hybrid. I don't know. I didn't quite see it. Very rare this afternoon have we cast the camera upon Will Raisin and he's not caught a fish or not been catching a fish. We've seen him lose a few this afternoon. Don't he's also me. caught more. <laughs> well, there, there may be some of the nations that want him to lose. They will be on sporting, I know. But it's essentially. Yeah. Mm. This is a talent. No, that's better than a talent, this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's you know, th there's top at three and there's top at three. Yeah. And there's only a few people oh, in what I call the the real top and he's certainly yeah. in the top drawer as I call it and he's in the top drawer. Well it does it for that matter so yeah. and the skill as well is getting it in just before the hooter. Mmm. Yeah. Well planned. Yeah. They probably had it on saving it for Alton. <laughs> We're down on peg thirteen with Jurgen Spearings. Um his uh, steward is Gary Bull. Now you might recognise Gary from last year's Fishermania final. He was of course one of the finalists and uh, talking about putting things back, Gary's come to help steward today, which is uh, fantastic. Now, we think that we might have a contender for biggest fish here, so we'll just weigh that one um, separately, please, Gary, if we might. Grab that one out, it's a nice little carp. 1.375 kilos, I think we're trying to get, get around the other side. So let me just see what's going on there. No, 9.25. No, way short, but we'll put the other fish on top. Um, Gary, how are you enjoying your day? All right? Yeah, brilliant, thank you. Different from last year? Yeah, it's completely different. <laughs> um, but nice, nice day to do this. And right, let's have a little look, Andre. What have we got? One Decent weight for Jurgen. Two five, one seven two five. So peg thirteen, Jurgen Spearings of Holland. One seven two five for him. Well, we have a potential contender for big fish down here as well. There's a carp in the bag of John Harvey. We'll see. It's around about at least a kilo, we think. So let's see if it's in excess of 1.35 kilos that will give us the biggest fish. So we'll do the two ways. We'll do the big fish first. And let's take the bag out. John Harvey continues, as we've been saying through the day, to keep catching fish. Just needs that really, really profitable half an hour. And that could change the picture, picture quite considerably. It's so tight through there. Team manager Andy Johnson is standing right on John's shoulder. Encouraging, cajoling. So let's have a look at the big fish first. Hmm. Already mutterings, negative mutterings from the chaps down here about that one. 975 grams. So it's not going to be the big fish contender. It's just below a kilo, 975 grams. And then we add a little bit on that should just take it, I think, over that kilo mark for John Harvey's last 30 minutes. One kilo, 175. So one kilo, 175 to add to Team Wales total. It's strange with Jürgen Spearing starting to catch a few fish because he was really, really struggling. Yeah. And now the fish are moving in. So maybe the fish are backing off where they're being caught and where they're not being caught. Maybe. They're coming yeah. in with a little bit more confidence yeah. because it's what we saw with Des. Yeah. Des, didn't, Des really right. struggled and suddenly got a few fish. Now Jürgen's catching a few fish. The only bloke that's been catching fish almost from the start and continued to catch them is well. uh, this young man here. Yeah. He's not bad, is it? Yeah, he's not bad. <laughs> Bit more practice. He's provided yeah, he's, he's, he's played up to the cameras. Yeah. 
does it more than Andy. The more practice I have, the lucky I get. Yeah. <laughs> No, the, the fish really well, and um, there you go, Des as well. I, I think that's performance at Damien. I mean, yes. I think um, I, I think Will's performance is, is awesome, but I think that from where he is is incredible. For it, for him to, I mean, what's he on to now? Like eight and a half kilo, something like that. From an area with a caught nothing around him, I think it's a cracking yeah. a cracking match. It's strange though; we don't seem to get surprised either with Des. You know, because you just sort of, unfortunately, you expect it from them. Yeah. We've come here to see anglers catching fish, and yeah. those two have not let us down. No, no, no. They've no. been so prolific all afternoon. My old teammate, Nick. First time we ever That's really nice came to my notice, we, before we fished him, before we fished with me and my team, I was winning a match on, on the Thames with a nice bag of days, mm -hmm. and uh, I had sort of 16, 17 pounds. And one of my mates came down and said, what do you see, Ginger? Did you catch a bream? I said, no. <laughs> you never caught bream on this no. bridge. Now, I kept catching, finished up with £21. Nick said £55 of bream fishing shallow on the Wagler. No. Oh, yeah. Right. Never spoke to him for Oh, I wouldn't have done either. See? That's terrible. Hands again, hands again, look. Do you know, see, see where... No, there is hands with that technique yeah, that's again. It. He's using okay. his jeans as a towel, and, and, and uh, I remember, do you remember Roy Tolson? I remember, well, I remember him well, yeah. He, he, he always said, you know, if he walked down the drive with his jeans filthy dirty, he used ground bait on the trend, yeah. did Roy. Yeah. His wife always expected some money, because yeah. he knew the more ground bait <laughs> down his trousers, the more slime, the more fish he'd caught, yeah. Look at that, between second and sixth place, there is, well, there's less than a kilo. Yeah. If it was between the other eight teams, We'd still have a contest, wouldn't it, between Incredible. seventh, really, and second. So it proves it's a great competition, but maybe we're, maybe we're fortunate, maybe we're unfortunate, the other teams are unfortunate, that we have two world-class anglers yeah. right at the peak of their powers. Well, I think what you said earlier, Rob, stands a very good chance of happening. Me and Tommy are fish for England next year. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> would even things out. We'd have been further in front now, in the oh, case. You know that. Goes, you know that, mate. But look at that. What a performance. Yeah. Well, that shows it, doesn't it? You know, the, the rest of the anglers are separated by the pegs that they have drawn here at uh, the Arena Lake. They're on opposite sides of the lake, all of them. But Will Raisin, who's on peg seven, their ship on the other side, as Tommy would say, is on peg 15. Yet the two of them have caught absolutely brilliantly. Will's got a great peg. The wind is blowing in that way. He's got the elements in his favour. Des hasn't, and though Des has caught four kilos less than Will, it's maybe a more outstanding achievement during the course of the four hours or so we've been fishing this afternoon. Jürgen's had a really good spell, you know, down there. He's, he's right behind the studio. And he's, he's, he's gone from 13th to 10th, which in the grand scheme of things doesn't sound much. But he's backing up Dieter. And, and, and they've got to, you know, they, they need yeah. both to catch, don't they, Tom? The, the, this last hour now, the, the, they've, got, they've got to catch. And that's what they've tried to do. Yeah. The, 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 obviously, Jan's gone down to him and he's sorted something out. Because he's from catching nothing, and all of a sudden he's going to bite every yeah. cast. And has Will gone down outside? No, he's got a fish on. Yeah, it looks like he'll pull in his pole oh, maybe. out. Maybe the fish has gone that way, it's probably a better yeah. fish. He's probably thought, I've, I've got enough now to try and win biggest fish. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder what his plans, and, and they do, some of the money they keep, the rest of it goes towards the Federation, goes into the Angry yeah. Competition Fund, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I don't know how it works, but I know they do all do that, and, yeah. and you know, the vet, lads are brilliant with that. You know, they're more bothered about putting three lines on the shirt than the money, yeah. you know, and th they know that if uh, if they win today, that that's going to go towards getting the ladies there, getting the vets there, exactly. and getting the disabled to the world champs next year, which is something, you know, really we shouldn't have to do, but we do do it. We had Julie Abbott from Ladies in the Yesterday, yeah. and they were running Tom Bowlers and race nights to get money to go and fish for your country. Well, I have always said that about the ladies. They will... If they don't get a sponsor, they will work their little hearts out yeah. to get the money, and they do. You won't believe what they do. I, I know that because I've done it myself. Mm. When Emma's been in team, I've, I've done uh, uh, 
fund raisings and everything like that myself. And that's one of the things I always say about the girls. If you don't get the money, they'll put the work in to get there. A few fish coming there. Yeah, it's started fishing again. The first suddenly a flurry. Well, it's got a bit cloudier. That there's a little front going over. I can see through the window. There's a bit more sun coming soon, but it's been cloudy for a little while, and, and, and maybe that's made a bit of a difference. I, I thought yesterday we were very similar. To that. It started all okay, then there were a bit of a lull in the middle, and then it comes yeah. strong at end. There is a big race on to second place in Fishermania 22, the international event. England had a wonderful afternoon. That was pretty much predicted. But the, the money today, and the bookie, was not going on who would win because England would pretty much expect it to win. And the question was, who would England have as second place alongside them? I think Holland were even. They were the favourites to finish in second place. In the last way, and it was Wales who was second, but uh, the difference between Wales and Holland was minimal, and the game between Italy. It was less than half a kilo between those three countries. Right, the junior... Contest has been sorted out, and finally we can get to Ali Shaw. All right, so, well, here we are with who we're pretty certain is the winner, Sam Collett. He only needs more than 325 grams to uh, run away with the competition, and of course, that £1,000 prize. So, Sam, we're going to, I'm sure you're going to follow us up, Sam. We'll have a look at, uh, at what your catch is. Looks like it's at least that, doesn't oh, it? Okay, okay. He's got the sandstone. So this, yeah, he's got the boat, there's about three kilo in there, maybe. Right, to win, Sam needs 330 grams. And he has a final weight of three kilos, well done, 200. Well, done, well, as uh, Andy Mee would say, whoosh, well done, <laughs> you, how does it feel? Oh, brilliant. It's all I ever wanted, really, especially after the year, so I can't believe it. Yeah, yeah. that's absolutely brilliant. It was two years ago that you were here yeah. before, wasn't it? And yeah. you, you oh, didn't even really want to talk about it. No, just, I put a lot more hard work and practice into it, it just paid off, and I really, I can't, lost my words, really. Oh, that's really. brilliant. You've thoroughly enjoyed it, haven't you? Yeah. And And was there anything different, or just perhaps that experience and the know-how of having been here before? Uh, I just felt, I felt like really calm. I just kept cool, to be honest, because I, I just like, know what it's like, but I just thought, at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world if you don't win, so I just kept calm and it's just a normal match. Really. Who's here to support you this afternoon? Uh, I've got my dad, my mum and sister. <laughs> their yeah, sister as well supporting you. Yeah. Has it been fun? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Let's go and have a very quick word with the family, shall we? Uh, she doesn't want to be on camera. It's always best to spring these things on people, I think. So you, you follow him around, do you, and support him? Yeah, well, no, I wouldn't say follow around, but yeah. Yeah, we came today. We heard he did well. He's, he's a really good fisherman, so... Well done to Sam yeah, Collett, well 16 years of age. He's a student, and today, Sam, you've got A+. <laughs> you've passed the exam, you've graduated, and we hope to see you in a few years' time in the major event. Of course, it was... Uh, Second place yesterday, yesterday went to somebody who's only six years older than Sam and uh, actually finished uh, in second place. Uh, it, this is the final score. Christian Jones ran in close. He'd be very happy with 9.4 kilos. Tom Edwards, Danny Slack, James Allen, Morgan Davidson. An afternoon they're never going to forget fishing with the top class internationals on the Arena Lake here in Staffordshire. But Sam Collett, 16 years of age, head and shoulders above the rest. And a thousand pound richer, but it'll not be a whole thousand pound once mum and dad get the money <laughs> on there. Awesome. Well, the eighth weigh-in is now complete. Well, there has been a significant catch by Dieter Friedrichs of Holland, I can tell you that. He's had over two kilos. But uh, unfortunately for the rest of the competition, Will Rays and the other game outshot almost everybody. He got a total weight of 1.775 kilos. It is a contest for second. Holland have extended their lead over Wales, Belgium, Ireland and Italy because of that excellent catch from Dieter Friedrichs. He caught uh, 2.1 kilos, so they have moved up into uh, six second. To second. Six yeah. to second. Yeah. That was about a One kilo, way. wasn't it? <laughs> it didn't mean a great deal, but One uh, way. absolutely fantastic. And that's what we were saying, what a great competition it is for second place. But less than two kilos between second and third yeah. place. Yeah. John Harvey had only uh, 500 grams. Uh, France did okay. Jean Desquet got almost a kilo. And uh, Lee Edwards of Wales had 0.925 kilos, 925 grams. So they're touching nicely in third place, Wales. The contest now is who's going to finish just behind England. Yes. It was Dieter's weight, Dieter's weight of 2 kilo, 100. 
I think that made the big difference there. That was, that was the, win, the winning weight of that segment. Will was second, but that was the winning weight of that second that segment, and that's what made the difference. Now we've got to watch Lee Edwards yeah. because he's had a, he's only had a kilo, yeah. nine hundred grams. It'll be interesting this next way. But he's now got a spare peg. Yeah, this, got to, this will be interesting. He can't fish in it because he's got that aluminium bridge going going across. Yeah. But he, he's going to have quieter water next to him. We'll see if that makes a difference. Jurgen's still catching. He's down below us here yeah. in the studio, and it's noticeable. But whatever he's done. It's worked. Maybe he's got a little, gone a little longer, maybe he's changed his feed, but something has happened that has attracted those fish into his 100%. Peg. The, the amount of fish that he's catching yes. that last hour, whether it's Jan that's sort of some, seen something and, and put it to him. That's a nice fish, doesn't it? That's a good fish. Yeah, that was 500 grams, yeah. that one at least. And he's certainly sorted it, his peg out now. And there's Dieter. And that's it. That's the uh, other lad, isn't That's it? his teammate, that's yeah. That's teammate, yeah. And he had a very, very quiet period, but he's yeah. now obviously catching a few fish, two kilos at the last weight. Yeah. And now he's catching them. He's a couple of pegs along from Will. There you go. Another one. Look. Now, the, they, oh, that's a better fish. Yeah, it's probably 700 grams. So they've just had a kilo. It's a big two skimmer. That's a, that's a, yeah, that's yeah, 700 grams, that one. Yeah, at least. Pounds and a half in old money. So in a minute there, they've just had a kilo, 300, mm. something like that. It'd be interesting to have talked to Jan now to see if see if they have done something. Yeah. Different. Peg eight of Belgium, Eric Deventi. Eric uh, individually has had a catch of what, ten and a half kilos today. Second only individually to Will Raisin of England. So it's a few fish in Will territory. Peg six, yeah. peg eight catching, peg yeah. five catching. Yeah, there you go, John's catching. Oh, this is a cracking match for second place, it really is. Well, the hot pegs that have been five, seven, eight, and nine. Tells yeah. you where, yeah, yeah, the fish have been today. Exactly. Well, this is the individual leaderboard after eight wins. Will Raisin, well, we've been raving about uh, Will Raisin all afternoon. Just under 14 kilos. But Eric Devent has had a great, uh, great debut in the international event for Belgium. Dieter's had an excellent half an hour. He had uh, 2.1 kilos, which was the best catch by far in the last 30 minutes in the way. Death Ship continues to plod away though and Death yeah. Ship individually has caught uh, just over 9 kilos during the course of the afternoon which added to Will Raisin makes them uncatchable. John Harvey, another excellent uh, afternoon for John, much better than yesterday in the individual event and uh, we, we had from uh, Vinnie Walsh, he didn't have a great catch in the last half an hour but he has been pretty consistent during the course of the afternoon and Jean Desquet and the Italians have enjoyed the experience. Problem is, two of the Scottish lads are in the bottom for Brian Clark and Jamie Masson. It has been miserable. But those weights aren't, they're not as disparate as we've seen previously. No. You know, 11th, Ginger Nick in 11th has got six, nearly six and a half That's kilos. Right. And, and, and he's all right, he's, he's way behind Will and he's, he's a bit behind Eric. He's only two fish behind Dieter, two, right. two of those bonus tents. There's right. only two of those behind Dieter. No, they're still in there, second place at the moment. Death ship, isn't yeah. it? Peg 15. These fish are great matches, isn't it? It really has. Distracted by a duck. Yes, yeah, come to watch him. Yeah. I hope it's paid its ticket. It's a big money. skimmer, Tom, I think, isn't it? Eh? Uh, is that a carassio? Yes. It's a tent. It's a tent, yeah. Oh, you got it wrong. Both of us. You both of us, which is unusual <laughs> for you, that, to get that wrong. It was right, wallowed on the surface. Yeah. It, it, it yeah. just looked a bit like skimmer. That's a, that was a female tension. They do fight different to males. <laughs> We're not even good there. Did you know that? Did yeah. you tell the difference? No. Male tension got bigger yeah. pelvic fins right. and they, they dip in a bit of their pelvis. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. All right. I believe it. True. Who disputes them? They do fight <laughs> harder as well. They've got, they, you know, they got bigger paddles. They do fight harder. He's had a liner there, but looks at things the way he dropped that back down again. I, I couldn't work out whether he did that or he were actually laying it in right. Mm. It's just the angle at the camera there. But it won't be in long, I'm sure of that. The chase at the moment is for second place. Holland finished second last year to England. They fancy Bench. their chances again. The uh, hooter is due. No, it's very oh, shortly. It's they anchor, they fish, should I say, until just after five o'clock. They're catching well now, them two, aren't they? And the mm. penultimate hooter is about to be heard.
Well, it does appear that England are now uncatchable. We have less than 30 minutes to go. But will it be Holland? Will it be Wales? Will it be Belgium? Will it be Ireland? Will it be Italy, who finish in the coveted second place? Apart from England, there's a great match-on. I'm down in peg five now with Dieter Fredericks from Holland and he's had an absolutely fantastic last half hour uh, and the one before that 2.1 kilos he put on at the last way and we've seen a fairly decent fish coming in that may well challenge for that big fish of the day. Let's have a look here. We're going to get the tench out first. There's a decent skimmer in there. There's a good tench there. One kilo 350 I believe. It's going to be very close. Not quite. One kilo, 200. One kilo, 200. Uh, However, that's just the one fish. There's more to go in, so we're going to put the rest of these in there as well. So a full net in. There's a decent skimmer in there. I'm checking that that everything is. We've, we've actually got a steward's inquiry on the skimmer there as well, and the idea is that we may well check that skimmer too, because that might be close. The full purse is 2775, 2.775 kilos, that's a great weight, but we're just going to check that skimmer just in case, because that may well be close as well. There we are, there's a tench, there's a mirror, there's a common, there's another fish in there yet, let's get that one out, and this is it, is it? 1.375 to be. I don't think it's going to be there, but uh, we'll, we'll double check it anyway just in case. David Kent there, the scalesman. 8.75. No. Worth checking, but eyes are bigger than belly on that one. Uh, that's it. Let's have a look. Where are we heading next? I think it's Wales. Andy Ford. No, it's not. It's Andy Ford. Andy Ford, where are we? Over here, Rob. Uh, peg 15. Uh, Neil Daniels is just about to do the business. I don't think we've got 2.7 kilos over here, but we have got a good weight for dead ship uh, on peg 15 for England. Uh, included in that way will be a quite nice tench. It won't threaten the biggest fish, but it's interesting that we just like to see one or two tench showing up today. We know there are loads of them in here, uh, but it's just they don't seem to be feeding. I suppose the uh, the pressure of a whole weekend of fishermania has uh, sent them skulking off into a corner somewhere. Look at that. Yet again, this ship delivers. What's he got there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine fish in that. Fantastic. He just keeps on regularly putting fish in the net. Andre, what have we got? The best net, right? Yeah. Two kilos, 800. Oh, he has beaten Dita. Two kilos, 800. That's a massive uh, boost for England. Uh, Bryn, what have you got over there? Well, there's a big race on, of course, to finish behind England. And Italy, well, they're going well here with Milo Colombo. He's got his eye on the watch all the time. He knows that time is against his team, perhaps. But he's had a good 30 minutes or so. Let's see just how good this at least one decent sized fish of around about a kilo in this bag. The man, the legend, we've just seen a big grimace on his face as he had another fish on the line and then lost it. But I'm sure he's enjoyed his experience. Talked to him before about uh, how impressed he'd been with the whole Fishermania day yesterday. Today he's seen it up close and personal. And there's a decent sized fish as we suggested. It's a tench. We reckon it's probably around about 800 grams, but the total is one kilo, 525 grams. So Italy had a good total onto their score, 1.525. We're into the closing minutes now of the international event. We've had Ooh. nine weigh-ins, and this is, well, England, a, a, a fishing mile ahead. They're uh, almost eight kilos ahead of second place hole, and they have extended their lead on Wales, almost three kilos between Wales and Holland. Belgium are close on the heels of Wales. Ireland still in the mix for second place as well. Arguably Italy as well. And it's been a desperately disappointing afternoon for the French boys and Scotland who must wish they could go home now. Yeah, Scotland did okay last year. Yeah. They, 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 you know, they, they They've were, not they quite were... got it right. I think Jamie will first to admit that one too. Yeah. They didn't quite get it right. But 
And the fact that Holland's come through to second just proves why they're world champions, doesn't it? Possibly what it was last year, in previous years, was, was Jamie's knowledge of catching bigger maybe, fish. But maybe. Uh, if you just there. tuned in, what happens is, is the two uh, competitors from the country, so it's Will Raisin and Des Ship there, scores are combined, which is why England is so far ahead. Individually been a great day for Eric Deventi of Belgium and Dieter Fredericks, who just caught just under three kilos. He had the best catch in the last half an hour and the fight, of course, is on for second place. Seven minutes before they crown the Fishermania International Champions for 2015. They came here as favourites, they came here with a reputation, and they have lived up to that top billing. It's one of the hardest jobs of all as well, isn't it? Living up to expectations. Yeah. And, and possibly today they've even exceeded expectations yeah. because yeah. it is a fairer match. There's no doubt about that. I, I, I don't think Mark and Mark will have ever had an easier match than that to actually help them run because... It's gone, it's gone to plan all the way through. And, and all they've done is just reassure them. <coughs> Sorry, go up to them, reassure them. You're doing all right, just keep doing what you're doing. We're winning it, blah, blah, blah. And just kept information going on. And they've probably not changed no tactics. And it's just worked out well. I mean, that, for me, is, what he's done today is unbelievable. Interesting what we said about being yeah, negative uh, earlier. To be positive. said exactly the same yeah. thing. You, you've got to be negative to be positive. Yeah. Less is more. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, both of them have been, well, they've just shown how good they are. Went to the final minute of the international event, the cameras are trained on the two guys who are undoubtedly going to win the Fishermania title. But the fight really is for second place between, well, Holland, Wales, Belgium and Ireland. And less than four There's kilos at yeah. the last weigh-in, the penultimate weigh-in, separated those four countries. Somebody needs to be timing down. Oh, it's going to be all right. We're obviously doing that. And of course, the idea is that you have to get the fish. In there, look at the hooter go. No problem really? whatsoever. Awesome. What he should do is bite his hook up. Yeah. <laughs> he probably will. Oh, will he? A bit like an no, no, he's he, he like can just declare no, that, yeah. he leave it to the others. There's no, no, because he hasn't put no, no bait in his pot. He's just going for a magical one. See if it goes under. Well done, boys. There we go. That sound confirms that Des Ship and Will Raisin combined, the England team, have yet again taken the Fishermania international title. The perfect pair. All of a sudden, this change look. Smiles on the faces. The, the game face has gone, and now they're all relieved and, yeah. and know they've won it. That's, that is an absolutely fantastic professional performance, that. Awesome. Superhuman, in the zone, out of the zone, and we can get their thoughts now. Down uh, at the lakeside, let's talk to Andy Ford. I'll hear from Andy Ford. Well, Desmondo, uh, as usual, you moaned about your draw, and uh, <laughs> look what you've done now. The thing was, I gave Will that peg as well. We sort of said when we drew, he said, what do you want to do? I said, well, you go on the best pegs. You're normally on the best pegs anyway, so you just want to sit on another one. But, yeah, to be honest, Andy, like I said to you this morning, the thing I just wanted to get was odd bite, which is what's happened. And like anything to do with fishing, if you can get the odd bite, you can make things happen, I think. It's when, like yesterday, when you watch some of those guys yesterday, they weren't getting any bites. So I've managed to, you know, I've had to change once, that was all. Uh, you know, and it's been all right, to be fair. It's, they've been hard to catch, very difficult to catch. Little left ones, little carp. I've had a, you know, one a free tench. Um, but yeah, brilliant day, really. Just odd bite. What's going through your head when you're struggling for bites like that? You know, how do you just, what's the mental process of trying to, to just make it work? Just messing around with different mixes. You know, you probably see me making a little ball of ground bait one minute. You know, I'll put a little bit of soft ground bait in. It's just trying to get the fish to, to come in your peg and, and trying, you know, to try and make them compete. Because if you can't get fish to compete, it, you can't catch, you know? So I was, that's what's going through mine, really. Obviously, a lot of, lot of nerves, obviously a lot of pressure. And, uh, you know, when you're catching, the pressure sort of goes over your head. But when you're sat there not catching, it's the worst thing. One of the nice things about this match is it's been very similar to the kind of thing you fish in World Champs, hasn't it? Small fish. Yeah, small fish, little bites, feeding, you know. Not, we don't feed through the pot, the, the, the little pots so much, in, you know, when we're away in the World Champs, you know, we're fishing with big pots and throwing stuff in. But the mental side of it, thinking about, and it's the same approach, you know, same all my fishing is. Whether I'm fishing with blubber and joker, with worms, pellets, it's all about trying to make competition, and if you can, get, and I think this happened today. You know, I've, 
sort of put quite, I put like quarter of a pot of bait in about an hour to go on the 10 meter line. I went long, did catch one small carp, but when I come back, it sort of got, and I couldn't get a bite. I never had a bite there for about probably a good half an hour or so. And that's that's what's going through my mind. Even you know, I, I didn't go down the edge. I fed it all day, on and off, and it, it's you know, thankfully it's sort of worked out again. But I was panicking this morning. It was nice to get the first bite to be honest. It did take some time to get the first bite. But, um, yeah, it's been it's been enjoyable at the end. Thanks, mate. Funny how it's worked out again, isn't it? <laughs> well, what can you say? You just you know. It's, you know, we've had a bad, a bad draw today, and it's when we hopefully still won it. So, you know, you've, you've won it. Well done, matey. Thank done you very much. Andy. Thanks very much. Well, here we are. I've got the man at the moment, and the question there was, has Des stopped moaning yet? Now, with the wind under his belt, there we go. Will, you are without any shadow of doubt an absolute machine. Brilliant, brilliant time. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's been tricky. Um, they changed the stockings around a little bit. The water's been really coloured. And the fishing's been difficult, very technical, very small bites. Um, but again, you know, like, not just me and Des, the whole team, the whole squad. Got Mark, Mark Addy, Mark Downs, Callum's been on the bank, running up and down, watching anglers that are catching, coming back with valuable information. Um, you notice that we catch, like, three or four fish, then it goes quiet, three or four fish, then it goes quiet. And all the little bits of information that we glean from the other anglers just keeps us ticking along. And, um, you know, Des has done fantastic from the hardest bit of the lake. He's just put in a, an immense performance. It's just fantastic. It's got to be said that whenever we see England perform, particularly in this event, you, you appear to be unstoppable. Is there anyone out there that can come up and challenge you, do you think? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you've only got to look at some of the, the, the teams today. You know, they, they've fished it slightly different, um, and they've come in with very good performances. Um, unfortunately, at this style of fishing, you know, Des is probably the best in the country at this style of fishing. And I've done a fair bit of it myself. Um, although we fish through international rules, this is quite close to, you know, the commercial style fishing which I grew up doing. And, and Des is obviously renowned as, you know, one of the best at it. So, um, you know, we're we're a little bit fortunate. Um, you know, the England team and the England squad does very well on any venue that we go to. Um, but you know, th this does suit us definitely. Well, Will Raisin, individual champion, England team champion. Congratulations and well done indeed. It's incredible how many, how many titles that these, these lads have won over since we won the first World Champs in 85. It's quite incredible, really. And you don't get the recognition outside the sport. It's unbelievable. Well, we've done the sums. We knew all along that England had won the competition about a couple of hours ago, the way they were angling. But in total, between them, Will and Des have managed 30.85 kilos. Holland have held on to second place. It was a great finish in the end from Dieter Friedrichs. He got 1.3 kilos in the last half an hour, supported by Jürgen Spearings, who came with 1.25 kilos to secure second place. Ahead of Belgium, very good showing from Belgium in their first ever Fisher Mania tournament. I'm sure they'll be back again. Eric Deventi, especially in the last half an hour, he had uh, almost two kilos of fish in there, which gave him a total weight of 14.75 kilos, second only individually to Will Raisin. Decent effort from the Welsh lads and from Ireland as well. Italy, it was a debut performance from them. It was a little bit different from their old guard of Claudio and Milo between them, 60 and 62 years of age, but I'm sure they've enjoyed the experience. As the French lads have as well as Gilles Cordin and Jean Desquet. And what can you say for them? It's a poor Scottish team. They've been here before and they did underperform. And Jamie Masson and Brian Clark are commiserations to them. So that's how it uh, turns out. As you know, it's a pairs event, so it's the combined weights. This is why England won it, because Will Raisin was head and shoulders above the rest, and Des Schiff was bettered only by Eric Deventer. He had 13.7, the same as Dieter Friedrichs. Eric Deventer at least made a fight of it for Belgium. Nick Howell and Vincent Walsh, they could be very happy with their combined weights of, uh, well, 9.125 kilos each. 18.250 for the team. 50-50, yeah. great team. Yeah, done well. Well, these are the uh, scores that uh, the likes of Hans Slagers and Gilles Cordine and Jamie Natton and Brian Clark won't want to see, but they will have enjoyed the experience as well, the crowds, the cameras, the initial adulation, and, of course, uh, everything that goes with Fisher Mania. It's been a fantastic weekend. Five hours of fishing yesterday, five hours of fishing today, combined with our build-up, and what goes on afterwards, that's 11 hours of live fishing here on Sky Sports.
Well, they're making their way towards the podium, and I think we're all prepared now. We can make things official. Let's join on the winner's podium, Phil Seymour. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Cudmore Fisheries. It's been a fantastic day here at Coral Fishermania International, and now it's time to make the presentations. Would you welcome to the stage our presentation party from title sponsors Coral, Mr. John Hill, and from Matchroom Sports, Mr. Luke Riches. We begin with the juniors with a total catch weight of 12.275 kilograms, collecting the trophy, the check for £1,000, and the title of Coral Junior Fishermania 22 champion, Sam Collett. And now for the biggest fish, with a fish weighing in at 1.375 kilograms, collecting the trophy and a check for £1,000, it's Tom Edwards. And now the runners-up in Coral Fishermania International collecting a cheque for £5,000. Along with their two team managers, the anglers Dieter Friedrichs and Jürgen Spearings. With a combined catch weight of 22.775 kilograms, your runners-up are Team Holland. And now for the winners, collecting the trophy, the cheque for £10,000, and most importantly, the title of Coral Fishermania International Champions. Team manager Mark Addy, the anglers Will Raisin, and Des Ship with a combined weight of 30.85 kilograms. Your Coral Fishermania International Champions are Team England! Well, yet another trophy, yet another picture for the England archives. They walked it. Wonderful performance by two world-class anglers. Congratulations to Will Raisin and Des Ship, and of course the management team as well. <laughs> the juniors have got him for a panel, look at that. Oh, the juniors have been really, waiting an yeah. hour to get yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sam Collett, he, he kind of bit his lip, didn't he? Yeah. He held on to it, kept his emotions in check. Australia. And now he knows he's a yeah. thousand pound richer. He Tom's has thrown himself to the water. And Tom Edwards is Tom's in there as well. Tom's I think in there as well. Tom, yeah. out of all of the yeah. 22 anglers there today, and we had some world class talent. It was Tom Edwards on peg three of the juniors who picked out the biggest fish, 1.375 kilos, and that wins the 17 year old a grand yeah. and a lot of fishing tackle. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's been a wonderful afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us. We've had 11 hours of live fishing on Sky Sports. Congratulations to Jamie Hughes, who became the second man to win Fisher Mania twice. Been a brilliant contest. We had some new countries involved today, but nobody caught more fish than the men with three lions on their shoes.